Hello and welcome to another episode of Android Dev 101. Today we're going to be looking at splash screens. Now I've seen a lot of examples of splash screens where they simply take an activity and that becomes a splash screen. It's very popular, very useful as well. You take care of all your background you need, that you need in the splash screen and then continue with your application. We're going to look at a different type of splash screen today. This splash screen is going to be embedded in whatever your first activity may be. In our case, we're going to call it Easy Splash Activity and we're going to have an async task that runs in that activity to deal with the splash screen and getting rid of the splash screen. So if, for those of you who don't know what async tasks are, I don't know if it's been discussed in a previous episode, but async task is the bread and butter of threading in Android. Maybe peanut butter and jelly of threading as well. It is a great tool for you to use to take care of any background tasks, maybe communications, computations that you may have in your application. In our application, you see we have a method do in background. That's where you take care of all the heavy lifting, the computations, the communications with servers. We're going to have sort of a dummy test running that will just take up some time so we can show off our splash amazingness. And we're going to have a for loop that's going to run from 0 to this huge mad number. And we're going to have a random number. And each time we're going to check if the i is factorable by that random number and our factor gnomes will record that. Now there's a few other functions we have in our async task. There's lots of different things you can do in the async task. Two of the things we'll look at here are on pre-execute which is taken care of before the do in background and the on post execute which we take care of after the do in background. This helps you prep for whatever you may be doing the big computation for, maybe setting up another view, maybe putting a spinner starting the spinner going in on pre-execute and then on post execute you would stop the spinner in our case we're going to tear down the splash screen maybe give it a nice little animation so as you see here the do in background returns an integer value because you can actually pass values from the do in background after you finish your computation we're going to record how many times the factor gnomes have found a factor and they're going to return that number to the post execute and we're going to use that number to set a text so let's take a look at our XML, what this async task is going to be tied into. This is the XML for the application, very simple. This top section here is where all the normal things would go for the activity, maybe buttons or tabs or whatever it may be. Very important, we have a relative layout for the whole XML here because at the bottom, above everything, we're going to have the splash screen. And this is set to gone, so we won't see it at the beginning. Uh, or sorry, so when you're designing your view you won't have to see it and then we're going to set it in the async task to visible and then we're going to fade it away and then this text will be kind of our computation for this demo and it's going to start with the hello world string and then we're going to set it to the gnome string before the application begins while the splash screen is still visible so let's go back to our easy splash and see how the magic may work so in the onCreate we're going to grab our text because we're going to need that later and we're going to grab our splash screen because we're going to need that pretty soon and then we create a new instance of easy splash the async task now we could set this as a variable in case we need to kill it unexpectedly or anything of that nature probably would be safer but for this example we're going to just create the instance and execute it what happens after it executes first it's going to go into on pre-execute we take our splash screen and we set it to visible. So now the splash screen will be covering the whole screen. We then start running do in background where we're going through the loop and anytime the gnomes find a factor we'll log it to the log cat and we'll add one to the result. And we're going to return that final result of factors to on post execute. In on post execute before we pull down the splash screen we're going to set text for that text view that we had saying how many factors the gnomes found. And then we're going to have an animation which will fade out the splash screen. Okay, so pretty simple. Um, instead of having a whole different activity, this is going to be our starting activity. This would be what the user sees. And let's see how that will look. Okay. So here we have our emulator. And let's make sure log cat's up so we can actually see the gnomes at work. All 
All right, we got our splash. Oh, they found one. Hmm, another one. This may be a prime number or something. Not a lot of factors. Oh, got the fade, and the gnomes found two factors. So as you see, everything was running in the background. We only saw our splash screen, and then when it was time, everything was ready, our gnomes had finished their work, we fade the splash screen out, and we can see our application. So this was a really easy way to create a splash screen, a splash screen that is light and convenient to use. And you can just plop down this async task in any screen you wanted, any activity you wanted, and have multiple splash screens that would run only when the data has been fully loaded. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, and please stay tuned for many more.